Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 10.1, Customary Length. Our essential question for tonight is how can you compare and convert customary units of length? Let's go ahead and get started on Lesson 10.1. Now I will be including this chart to help you with our questions so that way you'll have a guide to go by. Now this first question number two says five feet. We want to know how many inches are in feet. Now there's a little rule that whenever you go from a larger measurement to a smaller measurement, you're going to multiply because you're going to have more inches than feet because there's more of them. So when you want a bigger number, you're going to multiply. So 5 feet equals how many inches? Well, let's go up to our chart to remember how many inches are in one foot. We know that there's 12 inches in a foot. Think about a ruler. A ruler has 12 inches and it equals one foot. So if I have five rulers side by side, you're going to have five of them. How many inches would that be? Well, then our equation is going to be 12 times 5 will tell us how many inches are in 5 feet. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 1 group of 10 is 5, plus 1 more is 6 tens. So we're going to have 60 inches in 5 feet. Take a look at this model down below just to see why. Each one of these boxes represents a ruler, which is actually 1 foot, which is 12 inches each. So you would have 12 inches 5 times and with repeated addition, you would have 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. And that does equal 60 because 12 times 5 is 60 inches. So let's take a look at question number 3. We're going to look at our chart again. And this question says 5 miles is equal to how many feet? Now remember, we're going from a big unit of measurement to smaller ones. So of course we're going to multiply because you're going to have more of our feet than we will miles. So let's go ahead and look. If I have five miles equals how many feet, we're going to look at our chart. We don't want to look at this one, we're not converting it to yards, but it does say one mile equals 5,280 feet. So if we want to know the value of five miles, we're going to multiply five times 5,280. Go ahead and pause the video now and work it out. All right, friends, did you say five miles equals 26,400 feet? If you did, you are correct. Now for question number four, it's a little different than the last two that we did because if you look right here, we're looking for 240 inches equals how many feet? Now which is bigger, feet or inches? We know feet are bigger. So if you're gonna go from a small unit of measurement, which is inches here, to something that's larger, feet are larger than inches, then you're gonna to have to divide because you're gonna have a smaller amount of feet than you would the number of inches. So let's look up at our chart to see how many inches equals one foot. If you, if you remember back to the first question we did together on this video, you would know that 12 inches equals one foot. So if we have 240 inches, how many feet would that be? We're going to want to divide for this one. So we're going to do 240, you can work this out with me, divide it by 12. All right, so let's stop and think. Let's start and look at our hundreds place. If I have two groups of 100, I can't divide it into 12 groups. But I know if I have 24 tens, I could put them in 12 different groups. So I know I can put two groups of 10 in each group of my 12 groups. So 2 times 12 is 24. Now we're going to subtract and bring down our 0. Now I know my answer can't be just 2. That doesn't make sense. We have to go back and divide. 12 goes into 0. We don't have to worry about that. We're going to put a 0 there. 0 times 12 is 0. And we should say that the answer would be 20 feet. So 240 inches equals 20 feet. And you can always check it with multiplication. 20 times 12 does equal 240. All right, let's take a look at number five. Number five says 100 yards equals how many feet? So let's look up here at our yards. We know one yard equals three feet. So we're 
and we know that yards are bigger than feet, so we're going from a large unit of measurement to a smaller unit of measurement. This is large, this is small. So we're going to have more if of feet than we would yards. So if we're going to have more, you're going to multiply. So we would have 100 yards equals how many feet? Well, let's look up here. 3 feet equals 1 yard. So what is our equation going to be to solve this? You would have 100 times 3. And that will tell you how many feet you're going to have. So if you said 300 feet, you were absolutely right. All right, let's take a look at question number six. Number six says it's a foot and inches. Feet are bigger than inches. So if you're going to go from a big unit of measurement to a smaller one, remember you're going to multiply because you're going to have more of these. So let's look at our chart. How many inches are in a foot? One foot equals 12 inches. So 10 feet would equal how many inches? Think of your equation, what you're going to do. I want you to solve this problem by yourself, pause the video, and then press play to check. Okay, your equation should have been 10 times 12, or you could have done 12 times 10. It doesn't really matter the order that you put your factors, but you'll still get the same product. All right, 12 times 10, you should have said equaled 120 inches. Okay, for the next set of questions, I want you to move down to question number 10, and I want you to compare by writing greater than, less than, or equal to, to compare the two different values that you see. So for number 10, we have 23 inches and 2 feet. Now, as you can see, we don't have the same unit of measurements, but we can make it happen. If this is done in inches and this is done in feet, let's go ahead and convert two feet into inches so we can compare to see which is greater. So let's look up top here at our chart again. Two feet would equal how many inches? Well, if now one foot equals 12 inches, how many would be two feet? If you right away were thinking 24 inches, you were correct. So which one would be greater? In this case, you should have said two feet is greater. So this is how we'll be doing the next few questions. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at question number 11. We're going to compare by writing greater than, less than, or equal to. 25 yards and 75 feet. Now I know they don't have the same measurements, but we can make it happen. This is yards, this is feet. Now you can either change this to feet, or you can change this one to yards. Go ahead and pause the video and I want you to convert one or the other and then compare and then press play and let's see if we agree. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, so for this question, you can either multiply 25 times 3 to get the number of feet or on this one over here, you can divide 75 divided by 3. Either way, you can um, solve to figure out which one's correct. I'm going to go ahead and multiply my yards times 3 because I know 1 yard equals 3 feet so I'm going from a larger to a smaller unit of measurement so I'm going to multiply so 25 times 3 would equal 75 feet well that looks just like this side over here so I know these two are equivalent they're equal now you might have divided on this side over here and did 75 divided by 3 to get how many yards? Well, 75 divided by 3 does equal 25 yards, so it is equal still. Okay, for number 12, you can see that we have 6,200 feet, and on this side it's 1 mile 900 feet. I'm going to go ahead and just convert this all into feet only, then I can compare which is greater. 6,200 feet or 1 mile and 900 feet. Will you do me a favor and pause the video and change this all into feet only? 1 mile plus 900 feet. Go ahead and press pause now. All right, for this one, boys and girls, you should have changed this to 6,180 feet because we have our 5,280 feet to equal 1 mile, and then we're just going to add 900 feet to that. So if I have 6,180 feet, I know that that is a little bit less than 6,200 feet. Therefore, 6,200 feet is greater. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at question number 16 now. It says Marita orders 12 yards of material to make banners. If she needs one foot of fabric for each banner, how many banners can she make? Now remember, she orders 12 whole yards to make banners. She needs one foot for each banner. So how many can she make? Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own, and let's see if you're correct. Press pause now. All right, for this one, boys and girls, you should have said that if one yard equals three feet, then she can actually make three banners for just one yard. But if she has 12 yards, then she can make more. So since we're going from a large unit to small units, you're going to multiply. So you're going to do 12 times 3, which will tell you how many banners she can make. So if you said 36 banners, you are correct, because that's how many banners she can make, because it's 36 feet. And here's just a model to show you why, because each one of these is the yards, and each yard has three feet inside of it, and so you can make three banners for each one. So you have 12 groups of three does equal 36. And let's take a look at number 17. It says Christy bought an eight-foot piece of lumber to trim a bookshelf. Altogether, she needs 100 inches of lumber for the trim. Did Christy buy enough lumber? We need to explain why. So let's take a look and see. She needs, what she needs is 100 inches. She bought 8 feet. So we want to know, does she have enough for 100 inches? Let's look up at her chart and see, does she have enough? 1 foot equals 12 inches, but she bought 8 feet. Pause the video and do the math and see if she has enough. All right, when I paused the video and I worked it out, I did 12 inches times 8 feet would only equal 96 inches. She doesn't have enough because she needs 100 inches of lumber for her trim. How much more would she need, though? She would still need 4 more inches to make 100 inches. Therefore, she did not buy a big enough piece. Perhaps maybe she should have bought a 9-foot piece of lumber to help her make this bookshelf. Go ahead and turn your page over to the back side, and I want you to read through carefully questions 1 and 2. I went ahead and included the customer units of length chart to help you on these two questions so you can use it as your guide. Then go back and do questions 3 through 6 all on your own for practice of previous material that we've learned. And somewhere at the top of the page, please write down if you're a 1, 2, 3, or 4 on how you feel about the topic of converting measurements with length. And we will practice this in class tomorrow as well, so you might become a practitioner or an expert in class tomorrow if you don't feel like it yet. So here you go. Here are your questions. Work them out carefully, and we'll check them tomorrow. Have a great night.